So, long monophthong sound, E, which often isn't long and often isn't a monophthong. Um, okay, let's get started with the basics. It's normally spelt with two vowels and one of them is E. So, for example, feet, leave, seize. So far, so good. Now, when you look at the symbol, it looks like it's long. It's got the long uh, kind of um, diacritic next to it, but it's not really a long vowel sound a lot of the time. So if you compare the two words seed and seat, you can hear that seed was long and seat was short. Actually, seat is about the same length as sit. So this sound, vowel sound actually becomes properly short. So it's kind of a long and a short vowel sound at the same time. Why does this happen? Well, it's the consonant after it. So if the consonant after it is voiceless, it's going to shorten this sound a lot. Um, other examples, bead, beat, leave, leaf. You're hearing that the second one is much shorter than the first. So there's one thing to consider with this sound. It's both a long sound and a short sound. Right. Now, the other thing is, it's looks like a monophthong, right? It looks like uh, it's one symbol, so it's not classed as a monophthong. Uh, it's, it's not classed as a diphthong. But when we say it, it does have a kind of diphthongal uh, feel to it, especially if it's, um, you know, if there's no consonant after it. So if we say C, C, E, we've got that kind of movement there. Key, E. We're kind of going from an I to an E. Um, you'll actually hear this much more prominently in a lot of English accents, like in Cockney. So, say, k, beat, leave. You can hear a really strong uh, diphthongal movement there, and that's true of many, many accents in English. So, some phoneticians want to class this sound as a diphthong. Um, I don't think it's a diphthong all the time, though. I mean, if you say something like sheep, sheep, that's short and quite, I think, monophthongal there. Um, also, the other problem with that is that with MLE, which is like the newest accent in English, is really like a monophthong, right? It's like sheep, bead, bee. So it's difficult to um, really reclassify this uh, sound as a diphthong because assuming that English moves towards MLE, which um, it seems like it, it likely that it will, it's probably going to move away from a diphthong rather than into one. But who knows what's going to happen. Um, so yeah, it, but it is diphthongal in some places in um, a GB accent. So it's worth thinking about that, like there's going to be some movement, especially when it's on a strong syllable at the end, like in the word C. Um, another thing to consider about this sound is that you've probably seen it without the length marks at the end of words, uh, such as uh, really and uh, silly. And yeah, so you can hear there that we've got the same position, haven't we? Really silly. But the Queen's English would have those as, as uh, really and silly. And in Northern English as well, you've got a more uh, open sound there. You've got really silly uh, in a lot of Northern accents. So what is this sound at the end? Well, phonemically, it is um, really, it's not this E sound. Really, it's the short I. But that's a bit confusing if we're learning this accent and it's basically the same position. So in order to not confuse ourselves, let's just stick with this symbol. So there you go. The E sound is, um, you know, a bit weird in some ways, it does some funny things. It's worth considering these things when you're learning it. But the key thing is to make sure that you make two positions when you're doing the I, E comparison. Most languages don't have two vowel sounds in that same area like English does, like the ship, sheep pair. So you've got to make sure that your tongue is in a different position for each of those. That's the really, really key thing, that they sound different. Go really low for ship and go high for sheep. But don't worry about the length. The length can be short.